Hello, hello, hello. It's Coach Jet. We're back again with another VOD review. And today we're, we're looking at Nansom. And now we actually have Nansom in this virtual studio today. Nansom, how you doing today? What's up? Not too bad, not too bad. Just loving to be here and glad to get some uh, pointers on how to make myself better at this. Yeah, wonderful. And, you know, uh, firstly, I want to say you know, welcome to the Overwatch community. We're very happy to have you, despite what other people might say. Um, <laughs> I disregard them whatsoever. Like, we're very happy to have, you know, fresh eyes on the game. It's been, you know, it's been Overwatch. <laughs> now it's something yeah. else and we're attracting new people. Um, yeah, real quick. I will say, I never ended up playing the original, so I've got maybe... 50 hours into overwatch 2 nice hey you're you're on your way my friend um so what i know this is a quick play game just does like replay things the replay stuff has been interesting um but what do you what what rank are you right now uh bronze bottom bronze uh, bronze rank. bronze five let's go baby <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right um so since you're brand new to the game i just want to know a little bit more about your gaming background what what games are you coming from uh, a lot of more FPS. I play some uh, COD, a okay. lot of Hunt Showdown. Um, I also do some uh, just brainless stuff in, in games like uh, Satisfactory and okay. uh, uh, Oxygen Not Included. <laughs> okay, cool. And do you have any experience with uh, competitive games, like climbing a rank ladder or whatnot? Well, Hunt Showdown is a competitive game. Um, I usually fall between um the four and five star mmrs in there but uh it's a lot slower of a shooter because it's more of a uh, turn of the century firearms so okay this is a bit different <laughs> this is a bit wackier yeah do you have you ever played like uh any of like arena type shooters like quake unreal or halo way back in the day um i was a big halo player back when it came out and i actually played uh quake arena back in the day when it was still new beautiful yeah so a lot of those aspects are actually going to come here in terms of like the speed but what overwatch does is we take like these moba aspects and you can even say like you know uh with a giant roster of characters that can do a lot of things i think they get that from super smash but that's just me <laughs> i'm the only mo i'm the only motherfucker saying that um yeah so they kind of like you know take the arena shooters they take the 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 moba aspect and like put them together um and then we get yeah. we get overwatch it's I love it. I absolutely love it. There's, you know, there's the seal component, but there's also like just a lot of knowledge things. Um, usually what we do in these VODs is I can't really like coach your mechanics all too well because that stuff takes practice. It takes time. Um, there are techniques into improving them and make sure like, you know, you're, you're doing it correctly. Um, but I can't really see that since I'm not like, you know, there looking at how you move your arm and stuff. Um, so what yeah. we do in VODs is we just look at your decisions you're making like where are you going um who you're shooting at like what whether you're contesting the card or not um just things like that and as a tank player that this stuff's really important like you guys tanks control the tempo and the pace of the game um so it's yeah. kind of the, like you know one of the most important roles <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> okay um all right and uh just out of curiosity like what brought you to overwatch what attracted it to you um Actually, a couple friends of mine, um, they'd been playing a lot lately and they needed an extra person. So they hit me up and was like, you know what? Screw it. Let me try. <laughs> right on. OK. And with that, what are your goals for the game? Uh, just to get better so that I can uh, help support them better in the gaming they're doing. OK. Right. And like, you know, have your social worth go up <laughs> yeah. within your little circle. Okay. A.K.A. get good scrub. <laughs> right. OK. So with that. I think we're ready to actually see some gameplay. If I can get my mouse to work. Yes, okay. You, said, you did say this was a quick play game, that's fine. Yeah. We've done that before. If we do this right, they won't even know what happened. Ready for that. Five, four, three. All right, let's see your opening here. Cool. Where do I gotta pick? Nice. 
Nice. So, so far, really, all I'm really seeing is like, just be a little, I think you can be a little more aggressive. Um, let's talk about, actually, let's kind of talk about that. So, back then, when you were playing a little more back, what kind of what was going on? What was, what was the strategy you were thinking? Well, I, to be told, in a lot of these quick plays I've been playing, um, I don't know how my supports are going to be supporting me. So, I try to uh, use the cover as much as possible until I know that I'm going to be getting heals. Okay. So I was just trying to stay with the vehicle, make sure I've got the cover there and peeking and hitting when I can. Okay. So one thing that we can do to like speed that up and just determine our level of aggression right off the bat is to just look at like who our support duo is. Cause yeah. dependent upon who our supports are, that's really going to dictate like how we can play and how we can position. So from these two supports that you see from what you know about the game so far, like what is like their healing output, their healing capability? Uh, Kiriko, I know if she's got line of sight on you, she can do pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It's Baptiste, right? Yeah. Yeah. Baptiste. I don't have too much experience with most of the people I've played with. Don't play him. So I don't really see his heels. Gotcha. So, Baptiste is one of the highest healer, healers. He has one of the highest healings in the game. Um, gotcha. So he, he shoots these little healing grenades. Um, but if the Baptiste is bad, they're, they're, the healing's probably not going to be too great because you have to hit directs with like essentially a grenade launcher. Where Kiriko, gotcha. she just holds left click on you and you're good to go. Um, yeah. But her healing output isn't nearly as good as like Bap or Anna or even Moira. Um, yeah. So this is something that you need to recognize is like, who are my supports? And that's going to dictate to you, like, how aggressive that you can be so you can do your job. Do you know what your job is as a tank, essentially? Basically to keep pushing back the uh, opponent and soaking up the damage so my DPS can get killed. Yeah, you're on the right track. So, essentially, what we want to do as tank players is we want to control the map. We want to control, we want to control the objective, but we also want to control something called space. What do you suppose, like, space is? Uh, the large open areas where they can push back pretty hard with full frontal versus uh, where we're pulling corners where we can really box up and uh, get the move. Yeah, you're, that's mostly right. Um, take out like that, you know, the open stuff. It's essentially space is just essentially like what my what my team has to work with. So yeah. this is their controlled space and this is our controlled space. And this right here, we could we consider like neutral space, especially like when the cart's like right here. Um, as a tank player, that's really like what we're looking to do. That's our main job is to essentially control enough space and give our DPS players and even our support players, because um, supports aren't just heal bots, despite what you may hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> give them, you know, opportunities to make plays and utilize their resources in order to, you know, essentially get picks so that we can either attack the point or, you know, push the cart or defend the cart, assuming we're on defense. Uh, does that kind of like make sense? Yeah. So this is kind of what I was getting at earlier when I was thinking like, you know, you can take, you could probably be a little more aggressive, particularly, you know, we have two high healing supports. So when the cart yeah. was right here, you could, it's okay for like you to uh, move up a little bit just to like scout, get information, like where they're at. Um, but I actually do think since we had the bastion here and we had the roadhog here, you, if you did that, you would just kind of be inting. So you standing by the cart was actually a good, good thing. Gotcha. Right. So this, so a lot of this game is just like knowledge stuff, like just things that you got to know, especially if you're playing tank. Yeah. All right, let's get back into it. And I think we watched this. Yep. Oh, that was a weird sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Echo's going in chasing. Um, looks like you're the only one on cart. Um, so yeah. Ideally, in this type of situation, since we have car control, what I want you to start doing is actually leave cart and actually go up here and take high ground. Um, so that way you can, you high ground is, you know, remember like in Halo, we had power positions, like, you know, we had power weapons yeah. and we had power ups, but we also had power positions. Overwatch yeah. is the same type of thing. And your job as a tank player is to take that space. Um, See, 
that's something that I've never really thought of as a tank. Um, high ground is normally not something I'd think of for that kind of position, but you're saying that that would actually be more beneficial to have me up there doing, uh, initially, initially. Okay. So if you wanted to be like hyper, hyper aggressive, you would, you would set up like right here. Cause gotcha. you're, you're controlling this line of sight. Cause right now we have point control. What we're trying to do, and they, the other team, they're going to want to come back and contest. If they don't, we're going to get, it's an easy point. So they're, what they should be doing, it's quick play and bronze, so who knows what the fuck they're doing. Um, but what they ideally will be doing is they're going to be setting up and they're going to be setting up for a push. Your job as a tank player is to deny that as much as possible so that we can cap. So we either have yeah. a, a DPS or a support sitting up here, and you're going to be in position to deny them from coming in. So they can either come in here gotcha. or they can come in here. Uh, that's, that's what I mean by like taking space. Um, yeah. And once you no, got, get you. so once, once you guys cap, I'll even go into that further. Like what a lot of teams do like on attack when they, for, when they get that first point and they set up for second. Um, Cause this, this game is all about um, recognizing your advantages and trying to enable them as much as possible. And also recognizing the other team's disadvantages and trying to capitalize that and punish them for that as much as possible. Um, yeah. As you climb, you know, through bronze and then silver and such, that's essentially like how you play. Instead of like trying to like, you know, force the game and try to make plays, you just kind of play the game properly. And when, when inevitably one of the enemy makes mistakes, you punish them for it. Gotcha. So if you're sitting here on cart, you're not really in a position to deny anybody. You're just kind of like waiting for them to come to you. So that in and of itself puts you at a disadvantage. Got it. Like, so when we talk about, you know, this concept of space, this is what you guys, this is what we control right now. I'm going to erase all this. So when we talk about space, we control all of this right now. And the capture point is right here. Uh, we could say this is neutral ground. There's a tunnel right here and there's a tunnel right here. That's neutral. And then this is the enemy space. So like if you were to walk up in here, you're like, you're an idiot. But if you were to sit here in your space and try to contest one of these spots, that's you basically um, securing as much as possible the other point. Uh, the, the point cap. Because what you can do here is like you're on the edge of like your space, controlling the neutral space. And if, them, if they're trying to come in, you can deny that. It's all about just, that's like the, one of the main jobs is the tank. Got it. So if you, so one, that one little meme we've been for the Overwatch players, the, the older Overwatch players we have is like, you know, tell me you're new to Overwatch without telling me you're new to Overwatch. When I see a tank player, just, you know, they just won the fight and they're on attack and they have, they're just sitting on the cart, sucking their thumb. It's like, okay, tell me you're new to Overwatch without telling me you're new to Overwatch. It's not, that's not your job. You're, you're a big beefy thing uh, sitting up right here on the high ground. You know, you, you can see here, you can see here. And if, if you're here, you, you can see here. And then that, that way gives you the information on where you you need to move to. Got it. Okay. I think they're going to recontest, but let's see. I think you're AFK because you're trying to like stream or something. Yep. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> so notice that if you were on high ground, you might've been able to save your echo there. Yeah, and then deny the road because now the roadhog can touch, and you're down a player. Yeah. But you get it anyway because <laughs> bronze. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably everybody in this net lobby is written nice block on the hook. Don't think yeah. it was intentional, but still nice no, job. No, it was. <laughs> oh, it was. I yeah, Roadhog is my bane of existence, and I've gotten rather good at that block. <laughs> okay, we can probably talk about matchups then. That's another really important concept. But right now, I just kind of like want to focus on the basics. Yep. So for whatever reason, they're going to take a fight. Um, the problem here is, is that this is now our spawn room. So them kind of taking a fight here, they're just wasting resources. Um, it's not a good window, but I'm not botting him. So normally what happens when you cap and it's not in like a silly bronze goofy goober lobby. Um, so you, you know, you win a fight, you cap the point. Most of the enemy's dead. So what you do as a tank at this point, you have one person sit on cart 
you go up and you take space and you set up for the next part. You set, you set up for the next gotcha. fight. I mean, don't be like, you know, completely aggressive and like try to hold right here when the cart's still just over here. You just, you know, let's talk about this is, this is another really important thing. Let's talk about corners and cover. And this is, that's essentially like how you're going to determine like what space you're going to hold. So this is a big corner here. This is a big corner here. Um, so you like holding right here and you you would actually probably like right here to, to control this corner right here. That's fine. Um, but if you get a little too aggressive, that's not okay. But you really like when you're controlling space, like you also want to be controlling like what areas of the map that are safe for your teammates to do their job. Um, gotcha. And in general, for positioning, there are simply two rules. Position. The, number one is, can I do my job? And this applies to all heroes. And the second one is, am I safe? Am I not taking damage? Um, if one of these two rules, if one of these is a no, you need to move. Or gotcha. A lot of times in DPS, it's like. Am I safe? Well, no, because I'm taking 1v1. Okay, win the 1v1, and then you're safe again. Um, but you as a tank player, you controlling all of this space, you're going to help your... You're, without even talking to them or like knowing how they play, you just simply being a good tank player and understanding these concepts, these guys are going to fall into place because you're giving them a lot of space to work with and that they can do their job. Same thing with supports. They want to be in the back, by cover, pumping out heals, and, but mostly looking for damage. But that didn't happen because they decided to take a point. <laughs> they decided to take a fight right after the cap, which is just completely <laughs> brain dead, bone, <laughs> bonehead move. <laughs> so you guys are going to have a huge advantage here. Like this Roadhog should die. Yeah, push that guy. Good. That's what you use your javelin for with Roadhog. If you see him E with, with, with his vape, fucking throw a javelin at him. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you're... I was playing a game last night in comp. I was Arissa against a Roadhog. And while I wasn't doing it all the time, I'm like, I'm going to save my javelin for when he E's. Because when he does that, I'm denying him healing and damage yeah. reduction. And that, that, that goes into here, a matchup. That's a lot of, like, knowledge stuff. I want to, like, focus on the basic stuff. It's just a hint. I get you. <laughs> Okay. So this actually is probably going to be a really easy point for you guys because they're just going to be... See how, like, they're just kind of walking in a straight line towards the point? This Bastion looks like she's actually kind of smart. Nope, never mind. I take it back. But they're going in when they're down. Yeah. Hopefully your Echo doesn't die here. She might. Yeah, see? Yeah. We don't want to be wasting our cooldowns like that. So yep. this is going into like the, the... Usually when I review tank players, I just inevitably start talking about this. We, we start <laughs> talking about resources. Um, what do you suppose are resources in Overwatch? Your cooldowns, your weapon cooldown, and uh -huh. uh, your... Well, basically all your team's cooldowns as well, because that's going to assist you in what you're doing. Yep, that helps. So cooldowns, ultimate. We talked about one earlier. Space? Yep, space. Do you play okay. chess? Not in years, but I do understand chess. Yeah, so in chess, you know, ideally when, like, when you're starting up openings, you want to control the middle of the board. What yep. is that in Overwatch? Gotcha. Because if like, you know, if you have a bishop or a knight here, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Yeah. But if the enemy's controlling this space, you're back here and there's not much you can do. So space is a resource. Um, and that also goes into corners slash cover. Cause if the more safe areas that you control, like the more that you can do. Um, Got it. So when you're just kind of like, Oh, I see a roadhog. I'm going to just eat my right click. Cause I can, that's a bad habit. We want to just nip that in the bud. We always want to put Got a little it. bit of thought. And there's one more resource that's very, very important. What do you think it is? I'm not sure. 
Um, what do these guys tend to do? Heels. Yeah, because if you're dead, <laughs> can you do Got anything? It. <laughs> Got it. Your health. So yeah. if you know you're sitting at 150, but you can you really control space? And if you're dead, Not really, yeah. It, if, if you're dead, it really doesn't matter. Like what you really cooldowns you have. <laughs> Um, well, unless yeah. like, you know, you have a cooldown that can heal you or give you a fuckload of armor. Yeah. Well, that's a, one of the nice things about Arissa. <laughs> she's got both. Yes. And she has an <laughs> eat and like, yeah, she's got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just way more thought into like what you're cool. What, like what, how you're using your resources. So yeah. again, like with javelin, if in the roadhog Arissa matchup and you're playing Arissa, if you see that guy vape fucking throw a javelin at his ass. Gotcha. What's he going to do about it? <laughs> Unless he's smart himself and plays around cover and corners and such. Anyhow, um, let's see how this fight plays out. So, like, even with that, you know, this thing right here, this is your most valuable ability. Um, yeah. So kind of like, uh, I'm kind of curious, like what was the, what were you kind of thinking was going to happen there? I was hoping I was going to be able to finish him off. Right. But he had something else. So do you know, yeah. Yeah, do you, let me, okay. Do you know like what his abilities are and what they do? Uh, he's got the hook. He's got his breather, which gives him health. Um, do you know what else the breather does? No. It gives a 50% damage reduction oh that's so not only not only is his health going up but he's taking less damage that's why this yeah. motherfucker is impossible to kill sometimes like this guy that he... explains so much <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch <laughs> so this is why like you know most of this oh. game is knowledge just knowing yeah. that so now that you know that would you have ulted there no i would have pushed him back in and then backed up so that I could uh, have the rest of my team just trying to deny him. And now do you understand why it's so important to deny him from doing that? Like yep. you, you have that an ability so that can more sh- sense. Yeah. You have an ability <laughs> that can shut that idiot down. <laughs> so you got to use it. This is why we talk about using our resources wisely and just the whole yeah. scope of it. And this as a tank player, in my opinion, tank is one of the hardest roles of the game because you have to under, there's all these moving pieces in it. In Overwatch 1, it was even worse because we had way more shields and CC. Um, but yeah. now in Overwatch 2, like it's, it's a little easier, but actually it's very, very welcome in my opinion. I, some people would yeah, say yeah. otherwise, but those people are weirdos. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I don't care about your ult. <laughs> just gonna eat and walk away. Yeah, but you capped the point, so it worked out. Yep. And this Zens do that; they'll trans just to get out and just to live. Yep. And as you play the game, you're gonna learn more about like what the abilities do, what each characters do, and like how they affect your matchup. Yep. So like even even right here. Let's back up a little bit with this soldier. So if you if you're the tank and you see a soldier come in right here and he's visoring, do you know what his visor does? I don't. Soldier's not a character I've played. Okay. So his his visor is it's it's um his ultimate's called tactical visor. It basically gives him an aimbot where it locks onto somebody and it just shoots them and mows them down. It in low level play it's devastating. In higher level play it doesn't do shit. It's, it's garbage. <laughs> um, but I kind of want you to watch like what you were doing. Uh, here we go. When this guy like he just stands in this choke and he starts starts mowing him down. Okay, good. You recognized it. I think, I think I wanted to talk about it. It was, it was a little slow, but that, that, that kind of stuff will come with time. Yeah. Yeah. Like once I realized he was back there, I turned around. Yeah. It's like, hey, this guy is a... He's going to kill my team. Your team is a resource. Yeah. It's very hard to yeah. have the point if everyone's dead. Yeah. So I like the use of Javelin there. Just position him. Bastion uh, turrets 
terrifying. That guy is dumb for hooking you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, this is great. Got both of their healers. He's dead. This is looking like a cap here. Very good lamp from your Baptiste. Save the echo. All right, pop quiz. What are you supposed to be doing right now? You just won the fight. What do we do? Push. Okay. Where? Uh, Correct. Where? Up right and up left are where they're going to be coming out. So. Yep. So they're coming out here and they're coming out yep. here. So. So when we say push. What is what's the goal? Like, what's the intent? Keep them from being able to get to the point. So right. we can cap. This is the capture point. We want to position ourselves to wherever they come out. We can deny them from capturing. Yep. What are we doing instead? I fell back for heals, <laughs> but uh, just play. And I actually do go for the uh, push in a oh, second. Great, great, great. <laughs> so if everyone's dead, you can push up because your healers can you know heal you. As long as they can yeah. see you, they can heal you. Yeah, I wasn't 100% everybody was, so I wanted to make sure. And then, then you win. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, you know, it was kind of like a, a wash, but it was still just from being able to see, like, I think there's still a lot of really good concepts. All right. Um, let's recap now. What was, like, the biggest thing that you took away from this? I need to be more aggressive with uh, picking for positions, and I need to be a lot more uh um what's the word uh efficient in using my abilities yeah so this is all resource management so let's talk about the ability one so we have our cds and we have our ultimates we want to be more strategic thoughtful whatever you want to say i like efficient i'm an engineer we love efficiency we're all about it <laughs> Literally cl yep. class one of engineering school. <laughs> Efficiency is the most important thing. <laughs> All right. Um, what's another resource that we need to uh, really pay attention to? Pay attention to my team, making sure that uh, my heal my support is in a position that they can actually help me and that they're not getting boxed themselves. Right. So this is this goes into taking space. Um, what are some components of space? Like how do we determine like what space is a um like wh how we have good space or like if we don't have bad space making sure that uh we have cover mm -hmm. and forward push ability uh, available and we're not taking corners that are not available to us yet right so w like with corners like we have corners that we do ha we do have and then there's corners that we you know we want to contest because like we want this space we're removing the cart or we're denying a cart um yeah. and what's the last one You got me. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll give you a hit. It's down here. <laughs> There's a number out of a number. Oh, our health. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paying attention to our health. Yeah, that, that right. is something that I will say I have had problems with in the past. Um, I also like to play uh, uh, DPS, and my junk rat has a tendency of not paying attention to his health. <laughs> right, because if we're, if we're dead... And we're, we're looking at a respawn timer. <laughs> what can yeah. we, what are we, what are we doing? And a, a really like this is, this goes to all ranks. If you want to be more effective, stay alive longer. Yeah. I've had games where I was soldier and someone was chasing me. So I just start running around like an idiot and they keep chasing <laughs> me and I'm alive, but my team takes them off because they're just paying too much attention to me. Um, and you're also taking somebody out of the game. Essentially. Yeah. Cause they're just, I mean, I'm kind of out of the game, too. Yeah, um, but one-on-one -on -one is reducing numbers. <laughs> and then there's another secret resource. I'm not going to have you guess it, but that actually brings it up. It's called attention. You know, who's looking at what? Um, because, and I've, I've heard coaches say that attention is the most valuable resource in the game. Um, because if someone is pulling a lot of attention, they're pulling out a lot of ultimates. They're pulling a lot, sorry, they're pulling a lot of CDs and ultimates. They're... They're, the enemy might be costing space to, you know, to further have attention and also having cost some health. Um, Cause there's yeah. times like I've, I'm playing tracer and I just make a really bonehead play, but in order for the enemy team to shut me down, 
they they invested a lot into that. So since I was drawing so much attention, they're investing a lot into that. And that's something for you as, as a tank player. I kind of like want you to think about. Because um, usually at this point, like I talk about next steps. And really, I just want you to be thinking about like your resource management, like in general. It's a really big thing. Um, but when you play next, just really be thinking about those types of things. Like, um, like your positioning slash space. You know, what CDs are being used and ultimates. And, um, you know, of course, your health. That's very especially important if, like, especially if you start playing, like, a dive tank like Doomfist or, or Winston or even Ball. Yeah. Because um, if you dive in and you make a play, you need to be able to get out. And that goes yeah. into, like, your CDs as well. Um, and then, of course, be thinking about attention. Like, and this is, that's kind of like you reading the enemy team. Like, what are they really being invested to? So if you have, you know, a Widowmaker that's just popping off, they're going to be paying attention a lot and they're going to be investing a lot into that. And that's when you need to be able to recognize that and take advantage of it. Gotcha. All right. Um, that's it for me. Do you have any questions? No, this has been exceptionally helpful. It's really pointing towards a couple of things I got to pay more attention to and adjust. And uh, I'm really hoping this helps push me a little bit further up and helps me support my buddies that are playing. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, if you want another VOD, like hit me up in like two or three weeks. It's just a, sounds good. Some time to like you know practice it, yeah. hone it in, and you know sit Put it on into it. practice. Yeah. All right, and for you, dear viewer, thank you so much for making it this far, and we'll catch you next time.